and welcome to Talk FTB and welcome back here to the channel guys. Some more Barcelona news coming up for you today and there are some big, big interviews here that we are going to be bringing you in today's video because former players Malcolm and Carlos Perez have been speaking out about their experiences under the current board at Barcelona and believe me, they haven't pulled any punches. They're not really happy about the way they were treated. We're going to be talking about that in some detail with everything they said coming right up. Let's do it. But if we just first of all flick through the morning papers in Barcelona, looking here at the front pages, starting with sport, with the headline there, closed until 2021. And that there follows up on what we discussed actually back on Sunday, because it is looking now very, very difficult to actually allow fans there back inside stadiums. Football will continue. Football will return in the near future. But fans to stadiums, that's going to be a much longer process, given the continued risk here of the current virus and something there interestingly which has been suggested is as time goes on maybe there could be inside stadiums a limited crowd capacity which would basically mean there that less spectators were allowed in than usual but they would be there equally spaced between them so the spectators there the fans they would be separated there with a little bit of social distancing as we've all been told about inside stadiums and that is maybe one way that we could start there to see people coming back inside to watch the action but like I say that's not going to be anytime soon we're looking further down the line and sports say there may not be until 2021. On the cover of MD, there is a piece here on Neymar with the headline, Neymar would charge half. And I'm not really going to go into this in a lot of detail whatsoever, because this is a piece here that says that basically Neymar would accept half of his current salary at PSG in order to return to Barcelona. But let's be real here. Unless this article is talking about PSG accepting half of the transfer fee, it's not even worth discussing. Neymar could demand whatever he wants in terms of wages, but we, as it stands right now, would not be able to pay the fee that PSG would demand. And also do want to bring you here this cover from one of the other Catalan outlets. This one here, L9 Esportier. And they do come out there with Griezmann on the cover with the headline, Waiting for the Good Times. And they basically go on there to say in the article that the club are starting now to believe in Griezmann. They do believe now that sticking with Griezmann could result next campaign in better performances and in being more integrated into the team. And I'm just wondering here, are we starting to see a bit of a shift because of course in recent weeks all we've heard from the likes of MD and Sport is all about Lataro, all about Neymar, all about those big big signings but now obviously within the past few days we've heard doubts surrounding those big transfer fees with Neymar even with Lataro too and I just wonder now that maybe we could see in the days to come and indeed the months to come in the transfer window with the big players that we have we may be forced to stick by them. But if we do indeed move on here to Carlos Perez and Malcolm, if we start here with Carlos Perez, the man currently playing his football in Syria with Roma, and of course he was loaned to Roma back in January in pretty controversial circumstances when he was sent out there on loan with an obligation to buy. Everybody was sort of thinking, we kind of need somebody in that attacking area. And obviously then Usman Dembele proceeded to get injured, you had Suarez as well on the sidelines, and then we were actually forced to make an emergency signing. So overall, loaning out Perez with an obligation to buy, probably wasn't the best decision to make. Roma this summer, though, will be making that deal permanent for a fee of 11 million euros, which also isn't a lot in the current market. A few weeks ago, though, it's interesting because Carlos Perez has spoken on a number of occasions now about his time at Barcelona. Every single interview that he does, he does seem very angry about the way that he was treated. A few weeks ago, he said that he still couldn't understand why he was sold in January. And he actually said something very, very interesting and very true indeed. He said, people talk about the academy at Barcelona. Barcelona, but sometimes they'd much rather spend millions instead on players elsewhere. They don't have any patience with the young players at the club. And I think there, to be honest, Carlos Perez, this was a few weeks ago, we're going to move on to actually his recent statements in just a moment. But that's a statement there that we can all get behind, because actually one of our biggest criticisms of the current board is all about that kind of mindset. The fact they would genuinely, he's absolutely right, they would rather go out and spend millions and millions and millions on transfer fees, on big wages, on players 
players to come in without ever thinking, do we have somebody like this at the club already? Can we look there to Barcelona B? We've spoken about this in many previous videos, but that's the big problem about the mindset of the current board. And Carlos Perez there is bang on. And it is interesting because yesterday he actually went even further into his true feelings about the club's treatment of him during his time at the club. And he was asked there about his exit from Barcelona. And he said the following words. He said, it was a very tough time for me leaving Barcelona. He said, I had a bad time of it with my family at home. I didn't understand it. It hurt me more because of how I'd behaved with them for so many years before. He said, after the year in the Spanish Segunda Division, I had offers from clubs like Benfica, but in the end, I decided to drop down to stay in Segunda B with Garcia's Pimienta team in order to try to make it to the first team. So clearly there, he dropped down to the third tier of Spanish football to try and still make that Barcelona dream possible. And then he said the next year was exactly the same. I had offers elsewhere, but I always said no, just like I was in the youth categories, teams like Chelsea offered me a lot of money, but I never left. I always preferred to stay at Barca, and he said it hurt me a lot more because of that. In the end, I did accomplish my dream. I reached the first team. I played with these players. I was able to score, but it still hurts that they can treat you like this after what you've did for them. That's what hurt me. He said, I'm grateful to Barcelona because of everything that I've learned there, which has now helped me arrive in Rome. But the way the club behaved towards me, that's what really hurts. And as you can see there, Carlos Perez, whatever you think about him as a player, as a person, you've got to admit there, that would hurt. Being treated in that way right the way through youth career. And this is not just about him. This is about many young players at Barcelona who are striving week upon week there at the youth level to try and one day make it the pinnacle there, make it to the first team. And you can clearly see he's rejected offers right the way through his youth career, always striving for that dream. He finally gets there and then it's taken away from him in just an instant. And I can completely understand here the feelings of Perez. And in particular, it is nice to hear as well somebody talking there about that treatment of the young players. What we've all been saying now for quite some time under Bartomeu. And like I say, with regards to Barcelona, it's not just Carlos Perez who's been hitting back at the club during recent weeks, with Malcolm as well also doing his fair share of talking in the media about his short spell at the club, which was again another spell there with the player whose time was cut rather prematurely short after being sold to Zenit last summer after just a single season at Barcelona, after of course they'd hijacked his move to Roma. And Malcolm came out, he said, I fulfilled a dream by playing with the best at Barcelona. He said, I do not regret signing there. He said, I have a feeling that I learned so much from my time at the club. He said, I do think that I deserved more minutes, but it was a great learning experience for me as a player. But the interesting part came after that, because Malcolm was then asked if he trained more at Zenit St. Petersburg since he's gone there. He said, oh, we train a lot more. He said, we've actually got double training sessions here. Whereas at Barcelona, we only trained each day for 40 or 50 minutes. And maybe that was the reason why I got injured. And I think they're that's an absolutely incredible admission by Malcolm. And I'm so glad that a former player here has actually come out and spoken publicly about this. Because we've all suspected now for a long, long time that under Ernesto Valverde at Barcelona, we were not training as a team anywhere close. And I mean anywhere even close to where we should have been. The standard of training, the intensity in the training. We have had a number of injury problems now, season upon season upon season, with our current group of players. And nobody can really understand understand it, not even the medical team. But I just think there, Malcolm coming out and saying, you know what, at Zenit, we do train more. We train a lot harder. We got double sessions. Something that Kike Setien tried to bring in with him when he arrived as coach. And he was saying, when Kike Setien arrived, this is not what I was expecting. These players are nowhere near the physical level they need to be. And Malcolm said it there. Valverde's training nowhere near good enough. So that there guys is the Barcelona news from today. I do think it was very very interesting there to actually hear the likes of Carlos Perez, the likes of Malcolm coming out and openly talking about their experiences because quite often with players you hear them sort of play things down, they don't really say the full truth, they don't really speak out about things that actually happened but it was nice there to hear Perez talking about his experiences and in particular Malcolm. That admission there about the training, that is absolutely ridiculous. The way that Barcelona simply were not doing enough and of course let me know your thoughts on everything we have discussed in today's video. And of course, plenty more coming up. I've got a lot of videos planned for you guys. I really, really have. I've got so many different notes that I've made, so many different ideas that are currently circling around. I'm trying to get them all together and upload them as consistently as possible for you. So thank you indeed for watching all of my content, for sticking with me during these times. Football's not back yet. We all know that. We all think about it every single day, but it will be back. And when it does, 
We will enjoy it here together. Thanks as always, guys. I will see you soon. But until next time, as always, Vishka El Barca. Oh.